Hello everyone, it's your girl Miracle Sims and you're watching the GSL Talk Show. Tonight we're going to be chatting with Miss Crystal Cuellar and she is a sobriety coach that's going to help us get on track. So stay tuned. Welcome back to the GSL Talk Show. I am here with Miss Crystal Cuellar. <laughs> yes, I'm rolling my arms, y'all. Yes, you did it perfectly. And I did it. All right, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> Welcome to the GSL Talk Show. Yes, thank you so much. I Sorry, I was like, were you talking to the audience, talking to me? But thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm excited. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. No problem. No problem. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this conversation as well. Looking forward to getting to know you and your endeavors. So let's start by talking about where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I'm from San Antonio, Texas, born and raised. I've lived here most of my life. And uh, I'm also an alcohol-free coach. And I help Christian women basically navigate through um, or to a sober lifestyle and essentially help them you know, build that path to their purpose. So awesome yeah, super rewarding very nice awesome I, I mean i'm sure there's a lot to discuss and talk about oh, there yeah. but um you know hey how do you feel about being raised in texas and all that good stuff like how what was life like for you growing up yeah um i mean for me i'm a big family girl so my family is super big my immediate family is a little smaller but um yeah very family oriented um i feel like when a lot of people think of texas they think of like horses and things like that that definitely wasn't a part of my story <laughs> okay so um yeah so i feel like we're very family oriented pretty i mean i feel like i had a pretty normal normal childhood normal bring up so yeah but i love it i mean honestly i I've always thought, oh, yeah, I'm going to live somewhere else. But whenever I even just go travel a little bit, I'm like, no, Texas is where it's at. <laughs> hey, I mean, there's a lot of people that like to, you know, stay home. And I get yeah. it, you know. <laughs> and I'm so close to my family, too. I'm like, I don't know if I could do it, you know. <laughs> understood. Yeah. Understood. So tell me about the name Cuellar. Yes. You know, what, what's the, the background of this name? Yeah. Um, well, I'm half Hispanic, <laughs> half white. So. Um, but if you ask me about any other origins, I probably don't know. I've been thinking about doing the whole ancestry.com because I feel like <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of mixture within that, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, yeah it's something like that's a very unique name, I would say. Yeah. Um, I, don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's not that unique. Maybe it's, it's not, you know, maybe it's normal in Texas. I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, but you no, know, I actually know a few, a few Quayars. So, well, outside of my family. Mm. So it's, I guess, more, yeah, normal than yeah. I guess. <laughs> Oh, well, well, well maybe she's in Texas. Texas. I never heard it. Yeah. yeah no, it. Well, hey, man, you get, I'm from Georgia, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I haven't met any Quayars until today, so I'm <laughs> glad to meet you. And, there you, you go. Know, <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, I was thinking about that um, ancestry thing at some point, because they have the ones that um, are supposed to tell you, I guess, your African ancestry, like what tribe you came from or something like that. So I thought that was kind of interesting and cool. But I haven't invested in it yet, but I, I did think about it at one point. I put it on like a, a to-do list like years ago, yeah. but um, I haven't done it yet. I haven't marked that one off yet. I know, me neither. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll <laughs> Not that I don't want to know or something. It's yeah. interesting to find out, like, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, I have a friend that did it and she was just like, yeah, I'm this percentage of this and this and this. I was like, wow, that's, it's interesting. <laughs> Yeah, That's it's cool to find cool, out like yeah. those details and stuff. Um, and then how they can match it and all that. All that's on a whole other level. But anywho, yeah, yeah, we're just gonna have to do it, and then we'll have to converse again about it. <laughs> yes, deal. That that's the deal. I'll make sure. I'll email you. Hey girl, guess what I did? I oh, part two, right? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're always welcome. Definitely. Yeah. Oh, thank you. So, 
of course, well, tell us about how you got into <laughs> this endeavor of the alcohol. Um, you know, I, I'm, it's beyond awareness, I believe, what you were talking yeah. about. It's more so, like, again, the healing, becoming sober, and things that I didn't get into, get into this. Yeah, definitely. So um, I really came to coaching on this, just really going through my own journey. And so uh, before I was sobriety coaching, I was still in the entrepreneurship world and doing more so like health and wellness and things like that. But um, for a while, I um, had always been a drinker. I was never an everyday drinker, but I was a person that would go out and binge drink, right? So one was never enough for me. I was kind of just always chasing that buzz, right? Chasing that chasing that tipsy feeling. And so that was me for, for quite a long time. And I started to have, you know, some negative repercussions of that. And um, this happened like over the years, but it was never to a point where I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to totally remove alcohol from my life. And so long story short, um, I ended up, I would, I would take different breaks from alcohol. So I could go days, I could go, you know, months without alcohol, but whenever I would go back to drinking, I would still fall into that same binge drinking cycle. And so, Mm -hmm. um, I ended up getting into a relationship. We were together for about 10 years and in the midst of that relationship. So yeah, so like married, but not married. Um, so in the midst of that, of that relationship, that's really when I feel like my drinking just really escalated. And so this relationship was, uh, it turned to be really toxic and he had his, his own struggles with addiction. And so I had never really experienced that. I didn't really know how to navigate that. And so the only tool that I had in my tool belt was really alcohol. And that's, you know, that's what I would use to have fun and, you know, use to socialize, used to have, you know, my liquid courage, because I've always been very shy. And so when I started going through this relationship, I started to use alcohol to cope. And I I started to kind of realize that, you know, as we kind of went through the years, as things got, uh, you know, just just really bad, it was just a lot of back and forth, he would get sober, I would try to stop drinking, it was just so much chaos. And so, um, yeah, I started to use alcohol to cope. And in the midst of all of this, I had already believed in God, but I never really had a relationship with Jesus. And obviously, like, you know, that's a totally different thing. You can know of God, but when you have a relationship with him, it's a totally different deal. And so I remember there was a point where I was just really struggling and I was searching, I was searching for something. And I know this was the Holy Spirit because at that point I was like, you know what, maybe I should go to a Bible study, right? Like maybe I'll try that. And so um, I started searching, ended up coming across, um, you know, an acquaintance from high school. And from that point on, they had started like a little at home church. And uh, I started going to that, started reading the Bible. And from that point on, my life completely changed. (laughs) And I like to say like God literally wrecked my life in the best way possible. And so that's when I really started to get the heavy conviction on my heart to leave this relationship and to also Mm. to fully stop drinking. And I had tried multiple times to, you know, try to fully, you know, go alcohol free, go sober, but I just, I couldn't, like I said, I could never fully just break through that threshold. And so finally I got the courage up and finally left that relationship. And at that point I was like, okay, like I can do this. I'm going to stop drinking. Right. Because he's really the problem. Right. And so <laughs> I was like, he's a problem. I can do this on my own. It's fine. And honestly, that's when I started drinking even more. And it's because I still didn't have any tools in my tool belt. Right. I had Jesus. I started to build that relationship with Christ, but I had no idea how to manage my emotions, manage my triggers. I had never really dealt with life without mm. coping with alcohol. And so mm-hmm. there's so much to you. Cause you know, when you, you know, get sober and even if you're not an everyday drinker, like I wasn't, it's like, there's traumas that come up different things where you're just like, wait a second, what is all this? So I started drinking even more. And I would say maybe for the next few months after I broke up with him, that's when it really started to escalate to the next level. And I knew I needed to make a change. And I was so stubborn because I was like, well, you know what, like, I'm not an alcoholic, I'm not an everyday drinker. So I can surely do this on my own, even though I've been trying this for years, right. And so Mm -hmm. one night I went out and, um, you know, same situation, binge drank, woke up the next morning, had the anxiety, the depression, right, because that was another thing, my mental health was horrible. And I remember sitting on my apartment floor, and I was looking out my window, and I was sitting Indian style, just like this. And I was like, okay, um, I feel like I'm losing control. And that was the first time in my life where I felt like alcohol was actually taking over because I went from mm-hmm. drinking just on the weekends to maybe Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? And that was a thing I'd done before, but this was, 
it was, it was becoming more of a habit. And it's like every time that, you know, the hangover would wear off, like all these emotions would, would flood in. And so that's when I would be like, okay, well, I'm going to go out and drink. I took a few days off, like we're fine. And so it was really that moment where I was like, okay, I'm losing control. I need to make a change. And like I said, the church that I was with, um, or going to at that time, they already knew what was going on. They knew about the relationship I just got out of. And so I just reached out to them and I was just like, Hey, like, I need accountability. And so they held me accountable. Uh, I hired a sober coach like myself. And then I also hired a Christian therapist because I was like, okay, I'm just going to go balls to the wall with this because mm. really what I'm doing is not working. I need support. I need accountability. So, mm. uh, yeah, so that was at this point that this is about, this is over five years ago at this point. So, um, from that point on, yeah, I just started my, my sober lifestyle and, uh, yeah, that's kind of, you know, brought me to where I'm at right now. And like I said, I was already in coaching, but as I started to go along my journey and the Lord started showing me more and more on how to navigate this and obviously doing my own research and education and all that, um, the Lord just kind of slowly just started to, um, lead me to sobriety coaching. And so, and again, like you said, like it's, it's so much more now, now we work more on like, yes, living a sober lifestyle, but also really the purpose piece is a big part of my coaching now. So, um, that's what it is in a nutshell. So <laughs> I feel like we could literally go off on so many tangents, but yeah, that's, that's my story. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you um, for the transparency and sharing, yeah. you know, the details of, you know, how you got into it and things of that nature. And, I mean, I commend you for a lot of your testimony because, again, um, I don't think people realize just how important it is, the choices that we make, right? Like, mm -hmm. you could have chosen to do something completely different and we would not be here today, you know? So, um, so I thank God that you were able to, you know, I guess have the foresight or whatever it was, right, that, mm -hmm. or the Holy Spirit, right, yeah. to convict you and push you and help you understand, you know what, I need fellowship, I need accountability, you know, all of those are mm -hmm. wonderful things. I was just sitting here to, I, <laughs> I know people are tired of me on this, this talk show. Cause every time I meet one of y'all, these, you amazing guests that come on here, it's, it's like something that either just happened that's similar mm. or I just had a conversation or I just had yeah, <laughs> talked about I love it on that. the Daily Inspiration or something like that, where mm. these type of things are happening. Um, so as you're talking and sharing your testimony, I'm kind of thinking of things and it's just kind of like confirmation of, of different yeah. stuff. But anyway, that's how God does, you know? <laughs> yes, it's an amazing thing. And I'm like, it ain't nothing but the Lord. Because again, you chose the date and time, whatever, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. like, and then I, I literally every morning, it comes to daily inspiration. I just let the Lord lead or what I say. Like, I don't mm -hmm. sit here and plan it out, you know? Yeah. So, so it's just all his hand and it's just oh. so interesting and amazing to to witness I love and that. see but but anywho 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 <laughs> <laughs> but yeah I, like I said I just definitely wanted to commend you on that because um like I was talking to the people um this morning on the the juice is what I call the daily inspiration uh -huh. um, even though this would be in the future but whatever you know yeah. it was this morning that we're recording <laughs> yeah <laughs> um I was talking to them about like you know um that that accountability part and that part that's like uh it's like we know deep within we need to do something different and that we need to change but mm -hmm. some people it just seems like they they don't want to hold themselves accountable like like you mentioned yeah. you kind of was pointing the finger at the yeah. ex or whatever it was you yeah. know pointing the finger at other people and not even within to be like hey you know what I, I i need to change and that was something that i had to go through and um, what what I did to help me with this, I just was like, you know what? I'm the common denominator in my situation. Mm. Sure, you know, uh, the other people are there and they might have did whatever yeah. they did as well. But in my life, I'm the common denominator. And so if I want something different, I got to do something different, right? I got to yep. change or whatever it is. And so, um, so again, I, I applaud you and commend yeah. you for doing all of that. Because look where you are today, you know, um, you're helping people. And, and things of that nature. I don't know how many people it is, but even if it's just one, um, that's a blessing, you know? And so, um, yeah, I mean, I know there's a lot to, yeah. to you know. Well, thank you so <laughs> much. Conversation, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank so, you so much. And I love how you said common denominator too, because that's literally a thought that I had along the way too. <laughs> I was like, you know, wait a second. I'm the common denominator. Even when it came to toxic relationships in my life, I was like, okay, like, yeah, they were toxic, but also like, what what can we change here? <laughs> and mm -hmm, it's me. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, and that's the thing. We can only change ourselves at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's like 
we can want something for someone else so much, but if, if they're not willing to to make that change or, or make that choice, I can't do anything about it, you know, yeah. but I can do something about me and the way I either um, receive it or the way I uh, respond to whatever exactly. it is. And so, and you know, I, I guess I have to like really try to find balance with that. Cause again, like you said, you can want something so bad. Like, mm -hmm. So for example, um, the people in, you li in your life, did you have kind of people um, that were taking notice to what you were going through or do you feel like you kind of went through it alone in a bubble yeah. and then you introduce people in like which which scenario was it for you yeah um for me i mean i feel like my support system has definitely been very big but i think my issue was that people really didn't understand since i wasn't fully an alcoholic and yeah there mm -hmm. had been things that had gone on and you know maybe you know, people that cared about me, they'd be like, yeah, maybe just slow down on your drinking. Right. And so, but I knew what was going on behind the scenes, my mental health and my spiritual health and so forth. So I feel like mm -hmm. for me, I had the support, but it was more so lack of understanding. And so I still felt mm -hmm. like I was alone. And, uh, that's where really, you know, having the mentors that I had was really pivotal for me because they, they understood. And I had somebody on the outside that wasn't really fully, you know, in it so they could give me logical advice and spiritual counsel and all mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. mm. I wanted to make a note, but um, I'm remembering that now because I was just about to be <laughs> trying to make a note so I won't forget. Um, the the spiritual aspect you you were mentioning, like um, you you mentioned, and it, I, I find it very interesting because again, the guest that I spoke with, it will be the, the episode before this one, y'all. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So funny. <laughs> my, the, an episode before this one, um, the young lady was mentioning how it seemed like when she kind of was changing things and getting closer to God, of course, here comes the attacks, right? Here comes mm -hmm. the more things. And it seemed like it was a similar situation for you. You, you know, you started to come to Christ, X, yeah. Y, and Z. Now, now the drinking is taking over even much like, more. Like, can you kind of, you know, if you, if you don't mind, um, you know, sharing with us about that? Because I feel like there's this narrative, and I know I talk about this all the time, especially mm -hmm. people that listen to me every day. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> I'm just trying to like see if you agree here that I feel like, again, the narrative is you come to Christ, it's peaches and cream. You know, people get yeah. that impression that they're not going to suffer, they're not going to go through anything and, and stuff like that, which is not mm -hmm. biblical. Because when you read the word of God, He's very clear that things are going to happen. You know, it's very like, and when you go through trial, we'll see that. And mm -hmm. we, you know, yeah. like, so I don't know get this wrong to think that oh okay so i thought if you know i came to christ everything would be good like it is good yeah but it's not the type of good where nothing's gonna happen to you it's not the type right. of good where you know you're not gonna go through some so anyway, so anyway what i find is again as you're getting closer to the lord um the enemy is coming for you you know what i mean mm -hmm. even more yeah. right um and so I don't know, like, do you feel like it was that way as well? Or, you know, I don't know, whatever yeah. you have to say about that. <laughs> feel free. Yeah, definitely. So for me, I would say, you know, when I first, you know, started my relationship with Christ, really, it started with like that heavy conviction. And that's when I started to make those changes. But yeah, once I started to make those changes, I feel like it was good. It was good for like maybe a good like few months. And then mm -hmm. uh, I honestly, I feel like all hell broke loose, honestly, in my life. And what that looked like for me was I really started to, um, to go through a lot of medical issues. And so really mm -hmm. for really since I got sober to now, I've been kind of dealing with that. Now I'm in such a better space. But that was one of the first things that I started to really battle. Where I really didn't know what was going on. And so mm -hmm. I did that for three years till I figured out what was going on. And so it was to the point where I was barely, I mean, in my opinion, like I was barely functionable. Like I wasn't myself. I couldn't do the things that I loved. And so that was one thing. Um, another big thing, which I thought was really interesting, because like I mentioned, when I was drinking, I did, you know, my mental health went to crap. And of course, you know, I, when I would get to that really drunk space, I would have anxiety, I would also, you know, have, you know, the ideations, you know, of suicide, things like that. But it was interesting when I stopped drinking, you know, maybe I would say even after three months, maybe about almost a year in, and it may have even been after that. Um, but bottom line is I started getting um, like really heavy suicidal thoughts. And it was interesting to me because I wasn't drinking. I hadn't been drinking for, again, I'm really bad with timelines, maybe like one to two years at this point. And I remember one time I was driving in my car and I just had like this overwhelming feeling of 
like that I just shouldn't be here. And it's hard to explain. I feel like people that have had that, like they know what that feels like. And I just, it was just so overwhelming. And so I would say that was probably the biggest attack that I knew and I knew it because I was like, this is not how I typically think. This is not how I typically, typically operate. And of course, like we all have our days, but for the most part, I have done a lot of mindset work. Like I, I know Jesus at this point, I, you know, for the most part, you try to see the silver lining, right? You, you know, you're honest with yourself, but that's just, it wasn't the way that I typically was thinking. And the other thing is nothing had even happened for, to make me feel that way. Like I was, things were decent, you know? And so I would say that was like the biggest thing that I noticed. And I actually, I went through that for probably, gosh, I would say maybe like six to eight months off and on. And that was, that was rough. So I would say between that and like my medical issues and obviously my medical issues, I feel like a lot of that is from the chronic stress that I was in because of drinking, but also in that relationship. But um, and I can go on and on with that because me and God have had conversations where, you know, God has been like, yeah, this is an attack from the enemy, but you know, this is what's going to happen and so forth. But yeah, the suicidal ideation, that was, um, that was probably the roughest for me. And I knew that it was an attack from the enemy. Mm, mm. see again this is something that my my guest that i just had was um, mentioning yeah. as well so um so there must be something here uh for the people to know about this whole su suicidal ideation situation mm -hmm. like i know you just shared a lot about like you know what that looked like in your life and things like that but i don't know i feel like do, do you have any um additional wisdom to bestow about that particular thing because i mean i know mm -hmm. that you know <sighs> For me, like when I look on the outside, right? Um, like when I hear about people that actually go through with their suicide or yeah. ideation, things like that. Um, to me, it just seems like they have lost all hope, right? They don't mm -hmm. have, either they don't have that relationship with God to know that, hey, you know, I mean, that he's there, that, you know, there's hope beyond whatever we're going through, you know, all of that different type of stuff. And I, you know, I can't sit here and say that I know exactly what everybody thinks or what everybody is going through and stuff, mm -hmm. but. Um, but I think that we could kind of maybe share either some light or some wisdom or something to to help a person that may be going through that type of thing. Um, so, I mean, like, for example, if, if one of your clients or whatever would be going through a, that similar thing, like if you don't mm -hmm. mind sharing, like, yeah. what, what would you maybe like what top three or four or five like things that you would like kind of share for them to to work on or try to do in the midst of a situation like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'll kind of start with just sharing what what I did. And this is where I feel like having a support system is so important. And, mm -hmm. you know, in those times, like that's really what helped me the most was having, you know, those few people, those mentors around me to just be honest with, right? Because we can be so afraid mm -hmm. to just tell even sometimes our family members, because we feel like they're they might minimize it, or we feel like they may judge us. And so really having at least like one person around you, whether it's a mentor, or, you know, a friend, whatever that may look like, just having somebody that you can talk to and be like, Hey, like, mm -hmm. I'm feeling this way. And not necessarily for them to fix you, but just kind of getting that out and just praying for you. And that's what mm -hmm. I did. And I reached out to those people at that time, or, you know, to one person at that time, and all they did, like, they just prayed for me. And they reminded me of who I was. And they reminded me of the purpose that I had and that, you know, that I was worthy. And so at that point in time, I also feel like I had enough fight in me, meaning like, I knew that wasn't who I was. I knew that wasn't mm -hmm. my thought. And so at that point, I knew enough that it was a spiritual attack. And I, I guess not to go around in circles, but I guess that would be the first step is to have that support system and mm -hmm. to really uh, exercise your authority in Christ. And I feel like that's mm. not talked about enough in the Christian world. It's like mm. you, me, we have authority in Christ. Like we have that inheritance. We, it says in the Bible that we, you know, we have the authority to heal people, to cast out demons, to like, we have authority over the devil. The devil is literally mm. nobody. And so when we take up that authority, we take back our power. And mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that's what I would say is the biggest thing is to have that support system, but to know that you have authority over Christ. And I believe it doesn't matter where you're at in your journey with Christ. If, if you just even just know that, you know, maybe you're still working on getting rooted in that, but if you just know that, and if you, you even just say something simple, like, you know what devil, like not today, I come in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus and I'm taking authority. I'm taking my power back. I'm like, Oh, I just got chills. Um, like, you know, mm -hmm. that is very powerful. The name of Jesus is so powerful. So that's where I would say to start mm -hmm. and just to really keep it simple. Cause there's so many mm -hmm. other modalities you can do, but there's nothing bigger than Jesus. And at the end of the day, when you're feeling that way, when your emotions are 
in a sense, taking over you, you know, you're not going to always be like, well, let me just go journal real quick. Let me just go walk through, you know, like we got to be real with that. And so that's what I've seen to be so powerful for myself and also for my clients. Like it's, it's very empowering too. Like when you're like, no, I'm taking my power back. This is who I am. I'm made for a purpose on purpose. You know what I mean? So that's what I would say with that. I love, I love both of those, um, those, those ideas and things like that. And, um, I think when I was thinking, because I, I know some people might watch, right? And they're like, well, I don't believe in Jesus. You know, oh, yeah, I love the first one, right? Because my whole thing is you gave a practical thing that they could mm -hmm. do as well. Like even just having that accountability person yes. or somebody there, you know. Um, so that's for you, for y'all, if y'all mm -hmm. don't believe in, you know. <laughs> That's what y'all folks. But I'm, but I'm all for definitely uh, with the second one as well because that's going to hold you even if you don't have somebody there with you. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like that's going to like being able to again walk in the authority that Christ gives us um, will give us that power to say, "Hey, get thee behind me, Satan." You know? Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, and you can still go talk to somebody else too. Cool, yeah, but I mean. Walking in your authority is definitely something that can, you know, help you even when you're like alone and maybe you don't have access to go to somebody or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. So we look, we recommend yeah. <laughs> exactly. go ahead and get to know Jesus and, and, and things like that. But if, mm -hmm. if you want, you know, struggling with that, then, then stick to the first one then at least, yeah. you know. Uh, <laughs> exactly. And even if you don't believe in Jesus, like even just looking at, you know, kind of what we talked about, like, you know, just taking your power back right? Not mm -hmm. allowing that thought dictate your next action, right? Really mm -hmm. allowing yourself like what I tell my clients too, is there's power in the pause. Like, if mm -hmm. you just allow yourself just an extra few seconds, you know, and I feel like even just when we're talking about, you know, suicide, too, I feel like that would make a very big difference for a lot of people. Instead of being so reactionary, mm -hmm. just giving yourself give yourself a minute, you know, allow yourself yeah. to reflect and recognize the power that you that you already have. You know, mm, I like that power in the pause. Yes. That's good. That's good. That's good. I mean, so where do you want to go from here? You know, <laughs> I, I would love to hear like, um, I guess, you know, how is it going then? You know, mm -hmm. um, have you kept up with how many clients or, yeah. you know, how long has it been? You know, different stuff like that. You know, how, how is the the, yeah. the business going? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the business is good. It is, oh gosh, it's super rewarding. Yeah. So the main way that I help my clients now, well, as far as like in 2024, what I felt led to do is I run um, challenges. And so I do six week challenges and, and they are faith based, but I always welcome anybody, you know, even if you're not a Christian, like you can definitely jump in there. It's just, I do talk a lot about Jesus. So I, <laughs> that's just what it is. Uh, but I do run six week challenges and these are basically focused on the foundations of living a sober lifestyle. And then of course I add the faith-based approach. So things like we talked about today, really taking up your authority and things like that. And what uh, I feel like is different from, you know, my challenges is we really don't focus on just counting the number of days. We don't just focus on not drinking because what I've learned to be true from, you know, my own journey, then obviously working with other people is if we're so focused on on not drinking, we're so hyper focused on counting the number of days, it's like, kind of makes you want to go drink even more, right? Because you're in you're in that mindset of still the problem. And so what we do in these six week challenges, we start building that foundation of a sober lifestyle, but we do it through the lens, obviously through the Holy Spirit, but also through the lens of creating the life that you want to live, right? Because when mm -hmm. you are focused on the life that you want to live, you are simultaneously going to step away from that substance, you know, from alcohol, um, it's just, it's just inevitable. That's just what happens. Right. And of course, I'm not saying that you don't work on other things that you need to work on when it comes to living a sober lifestyle. That's where the foundational piece is, but there is, there's really a lot of power in shifting your focus to life instead of so focused on alcohol, because then again, in my opinion, you are still giving that substance power, right? So that's really what we focus on in the six weeks. And then one thing that I launched uh, this year too, we're actually just starting, we're kicking off uh, next Monday is my mastermind. And that's going to be more for women that are already sober. You know, you could be newly sober and where you really just want to work more so on the sober minded piece. Mm. Because I believe being sober and being sober minded are two different things, even though they are connected, right? Because you can lay down the bottle or lay down the substance, but up here, you have to be of sober mind. Just like when I was stuck in the binge drinking cycle and I was also in that toxic relationship, 
both of those things together didn't allow me to see clearly. So that's where I really take it to the next step. And it is also more purpose focused. So uh, for instance, I have women in there that are, um, that they feel like the Lord wants them to write a book. Um, I have aspiring coaches, things like that. And so, and again, you could, it could be a Bible study. It could be whatever you're trying to work on. It doesn't matter, but really just going to the next level and creating that life. So those are the two things that, that I have this year. And I'm super excited about it. They've been really transformational for a lot of people. So yeah. Awesome. I mean, sounds great. I was wondering actually, um, you know, if is the, I guess the steps or things like that, mm -hmm. did it, did it kind of fit in a way that it could be in general um, mm -hmm. or is it more so geared towards like alcohol and being sober particular and, and it, does it kind of stand that lane or is it something that, for example, maybe I'm not dealing with alcohol, but maybe I'm dealing with something else, you know, like, yeah. am I able to tap in and, and yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I've had women in my challenges where they, um, they're already sober from alcohol and they want to stop smoking cigarettes and the principles still help them so much. And that's actually something where the Lord has kind of like helped me shift this year where I'm kind of opening that up to just sobriety opposed to just alcohol. But obviously alcohol is my story. That's what I speak on. Uh, but I do have uh, yeah experience, you know, with helping people with other things, even, you know, marijuana, things like that. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. That is great. <laughs> and, and you said, how long has it been since you've been doing this? Um, so, I mean, I've been coaching for six years, but in sobriety coaching, uh, for about mm, maybe like almost four at this point. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Congratulations on different milestones, man. I know I've been trying to like this, my milestones these days. Cause it's like, I'm just trying to celebrate every moment, you know? So absolutely. whenever you get those goals, I hope that you are able to celebrate those things as yes. well. And, yeah, I mean, I, well, I don't want to be low on your time, but I mean, is there anything else you would like to share with us before you go? Um, I guess the only thing would be is, I guess, if you're questioning your relationship with alcohol, um, one thing that really kept me stuck was feeling like I had to do it alone or feeling like, uh, you know, people would think certain things about me if I actually got help or things like that, or even just being stuck in fear. So I just want to encourage anybody listening, if you're questioning your relationship with alcohol or any substance in that you know, realm, uh, just know that it's okay to get support and doesn't make you less than doesn't make you weak. It actually makes you really powerful and, and bold. And, um, so I just want to encourage you with that. And yeah, so. Awesome. And so what can the people find you in, um, your endeavors? Yeah. So my main platform is TikTok, And then I also have a free community over on Facebook, which I can give you the link to if you want to post that. Um, and yeah, those are the two main places. So. Okay, cool. Do you want to share with us the name of yeah. the Facebook or, or the TikTok? You just yes. Oh, I can just okay. Yeah. So the um the Facebook group is called Kingdom Alliance Community. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Awesome. And so in that yeah in that community we talk all about um you know obviously being of sober mind we talk about purpose and then of course Jesus because yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, okay, look, yep. can't have a king without the king. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah but we have fun in there and i run um i run free challenges in there too and i'm always going live there's lots of free resources in there too so that's a really great place to start awesome well, i really appreciate you taking out your time and sharing yeah, your testimony you. you know the different things that you are doing look for the kingdom right yeah. doing my best <laughs> out here <laughs> yes and for your life and everything like that um I pray that you can continue to just go and grow and thrive and just help as many people as you can and stay on this path. And like I said, celebrate each moment, man. Congratulations yeah. on what you've accomplished this far. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me. This was fun. <laughs>Thank you so much for watching the GSL Talk Show and thank you to Miss Crystal for joining us tonight. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Check out her group and the rest of her endeavors. Have a good night.